Whoa, you know, dragon riding is super, super fun. But you know what's more fun? Elemental Shaman. Oh, what's up gamers it's tree sap jake with yet another video and today's video is one that has a special place in my heart it is my in-depth guide to elemental shaman for dragonfly it's been two years quite literally almost two years since we did the last one for shadowlands and everyone found that very very useful it was useful to kind of go really into depth use, utilizing my knowledge uh, of the class and intricacies for PvP and what you can kind of do and what might help you going forwards. Obviously things change. Uh, this is a guide that is based off what we know from Season 1, from the changes that are happening now. There has literally just been some, some nerfs that have come out, so there's lots of different things to talk about. And I think it'll be interesting to go through all of that and kind of give me my feedback. If you're finding this video for the first time, welcome, first of all. Throw a like, throw a subscribe, please. We need as much support as possible. It really keeps the channel growing. But if you want to know who I am, my name is Jake. I am a Elemental Shaman that has been playing at 2-4 plus for a number of years now. And I specialize in talking about casters, Elemental Shaman in particular. And I'm going to be giving you my full details. And, you know, I've been... Um, I've done editing for a lot of big names, for Mir, for Gelu, for um, Snuts. I've done lots of different things around the, the internet. So I've got an, an idea of what I think would be is, is a high level of gameplay. So I think let's crack into it and kind of get started and kind of talk about what is Elemental Shaman. If you're thinking of picking this up for the first time, Elemental Shaman is a very interesting class. It interacts with crit in a very interesting way. It's got 250% crit. And that has always been built into the class for a very, very long time. Now it's kind of in the talents again, which is sort of what it used to be back in the day. You used to have that crit that was kind of part of the talents, uh, which you obviously can spec into in Elemental Shaman now. And it is just a very, very fun, powerful caster that does a lot of damage, does a lot of burst damage, and can also do a lot of sustain damage depending on what kind of build you're playing. Elemental Shaman has always been one of those classes that is either absolutely banging or kind of doing mediocre. And that doesn't stop it from being an amazing class to play, an amazing spec to play. It's a lot of fun. And now, coming back into Shadowlands um, and through into Dragonflight, we've got a lot of utility back, which I think is really awesome. So a lot of utility that I think makes it a pleasure to play. The gameplay style of a, a Shaman in general is often utility. You are very much a support caster, a caster that is able to you know help the team that has a lot of totems a lot of utility you can off heal you can kick you can do lots of different things you have the shortest cooldown kick in the game which means that you should be getting them out quite a lot as a you're very disruptive basically you kick grounding totem lots of different things to use and that makes you very very powerful in that regard that's why you pair super well with things like warlocks and things like warriors because you let them go ahead and do the things that they need to do whilst you're supporting them in the back line and i think that's really awesome you're also amazing at keeping your healers out of trouble stopping the cc keeping the cc off you've also got um hex which is a an amazing ability that can lock down people in a polymorph in which they can obviously move around but still they're locked down in a polymorph that no healer can dispel unless you can dispel curses so rest of druid and shaman Obviously, mages can do this as well, and that means that there are only really three classes in which they can that can actually be stopped, and that makes them a perfect target to be hexed themselves. Obviously, there's lots of fun things about Elemental Shaman, lots and lots of things in general, and I think it can be really summarized as a majorly bursty class with a lot of utility. It's a lot of fun. So now that I've kind of given you an introduction to Elemental Shaman and kind of what it can do and why you should be hyped to play it, let's kind of get stuck in and talk about the talents. So this is the talent tree that I've got open at the minute. This is a, a build that I've been thinking about and I'm going to kind of go over why I've chosen specific paths and what I would do and what I could change in general. I think there's a few options we can go to but this is pretty cookie cutter for me. A lot of you will know that on the beta there was an incredible build where Ellie Blast was absolutely blasting people. That's this ability just in case anyone was wondering. It replaces Earthshock and it was critting for about 360k and that was because of an interaction in which certain 
talents, uh, this one in particular, Magma Chamber, was increasing the damage considerably. And you would wait for the stacks to go up and then you would do big damage. In, in a burst cooldown, that hit for a lot. And obviously a lot of the interactions that came with, you know, using like Master of Elements, for example, and kind of the combinations between those. And it would work pretty well. However, I find that really, really boring. And also it has just been nerfed, thank God. I find that game style really boring, mostly because Ellie getting kicked on elemental stuff means that you can't cast, and that is really dire for a class that has three spell schools. That means there are three possibilities to be kicked on, obviously apart from Frost, unless you're playing Ice Fury. You have three schools to choose from, which means that if you get kicked, it doesn't matter. You pick another spell school. Getting kicked on all that meant you can't do anything. You're useless, and it's a long cast, and it's not fun to play. So, my opinion, I'm glad that that's dead in the water. I'm happier playing other um, play styles that makes it feel better to play the class. So let's kind of start from the beginning. This is a deep dive after all, so we can start from the beginning. Let's talk about the regular talents. Now, if you watch the video about when I went into the beta and, and, and the alpha and kind of had a look at these, um, there's a few different options and nothing, not much has changed, but there's a few bits and pieces that are kind of been improved upon or changed around. So you start with Lava Burst and you start with Chain Lightning. Those are on there. Don't worry too much about Chain Lightning, but Lava Burst is a big damage dealer. When you're at level 70, it usually hits for about 40 to 50k, um, because it always crits, which is nice. And obviously there's interactions that I'll talk about with Elemental that kind of improves that. So your Lava Burst hits quite hard, and I think that's awesome, uh, which means, you know, 40 to 50k, most people have about 360, 350 khp. Warlocks have a bit more, other classes have a bit more. It does a sizable chunk, especially if it overloads and hits it, you know, hits them again. So, Lava Burst is your main ability. Now, I go down here and I always take Earth Elemental. The reason why I take Earth Elemental is that it's a nice defensive ability. It's another defensive ability in which your health increases. This is good. Into most classes, this kind of can keep you alive, especially if your Fire Ellie is not on at the minute. Um, you, I'll talk about why that's interesting in a bit, but you call this out, you get 15% maximum health increase, and if you take the right talent in the elemental tree, you get 5% damage reduction too, which is nice, and that I think that that stacks with your actual wall. So you get a nice bit of reduction there and kind of makes you a bit more tanky. You obviously want Wind Shear, that's your kick, that's something that's going to be really big, and you obviously want Astral Shift, which is your 40% less damage for 12 seconds. I think that's really nice. You then have these options here. Again, one of the best things about Dragonflight is that you have options in your talent tree. One of the best innovations, you can kind of pick and choose a style, and that's really awesome. I've gone for Planes Traveler, and the reason why I've gone for Planes Traveler is because it brings it down from two minutes to a 1.5, minute cooldown so minute 30 and increases duration by four so it goes from an eight second wall to a 12 second wall which is nice that's a nice long time you can pre-wall things and you'll be okay throughout most of it 40 percent less damage is pretty significant it's a good wall it's probably one of the best uh, defensive cds best walls in the game um obviously you need to not be in a stun to use it but if you pre-wall something when you know the kidney's coming up that's fantastic i would always take this uh you could you could do this you know, if you know you're going into classes that have like a big two minute CD, for example, and you want a 55% wall, then you know what, that could work for eight seconds, that could work. This could be something, I mean, Astral Bulwark could be the move into something, but I genuinely do believe that the shorter cooldown on Astral Shift is more useful with a longer time because you can pre-wall and you can pretty much be safe throughout most chain CC. Another one I go for here is Spirit Wolf. Now, Spirit Wolf is a good one. If you're kiting, you can use Spirit Wolf to kind of get your damage reduction going. You can increase the amount of damage reduction you have. It's very useful, but also increases your movement speed, which means that you can kite the living shit out of everything. This is awesome. This is a good ability. Alternatively, you could play Thunderous Pause. Sorry, if I get that over there, you see every 60 seconds, you get a massive speed increase. This is perfect for if you need a kind of quick getaway. How useful will it be whether everyone has mobility is a different thing. DKs are very, very... Um, oppressive so you might want to take something that kind of gives you a bit more damage reduction like spirit wolf whilst your other wizard so for example maybe like a mage or maybe a warlock is kind of battering them from the other side you will have a 20 percent damage reduction maybe 25 percent if you've got your earth ellie or fire ellie out and that's amazing and you're kind of doing and you're kind of chilling you're kind of chilling frost shock is a big one i'd always take frost shock I think having that, having an, a, a basically a spammable ability that does a little bit of damage but also reduces their speed by 50 percent is insane very good for kiting i'll always take cleanse spirit removing curse is important especially into athlete warlocks and especially being out in, into other 
um, shamans because you want to be able to get rid of that hex. If you can't get rid of the hex, that makes you very useless. I feel this in Wrath of the Lich King where you can't do that. So it's it's a difficult situation if you can't remove the hex. So I always take cleanse spirit. On this sort of middle rung here, I've sort of, I've changed something here because I noticed a little mistake about that. So apologies. I kind of took away from this. I don't need the next healing effectiveness done because most of the time in threes and twos you'll be with a healer you won't be doing double dps as far as i know so you probably won't need this might be really good if you're doing double dps as a way but in the middle rung you've kind of got the the sort of utility as we said the kind of condensed spirit but cap totem a very good short stun obviously it drs with your lasso but in a good way it kind of can keep like multiple different people off you i don't tend to go down this path i don't feel like there's any need to take the extra bits and pieces i feel like it's a wasted point uh, going along here, increases all fire and frost damage you deal by 3%. That's nice. A bit of extra damage on your lava burst, a bit of extra damage on your frost shock. Important. I do take earth shield. I think earth shield is really, really good. Um, it does obviously increase the healing you do on someone that you can, you can use this to off heal. You can use this on yourself. Obviously, I feel like hybrid healing has been nerfed significantly in Dragonflight. It does feel like it takes a lot more mana, but I think it's really important that you have earth shield because it's passive healing and it just increases healing in general um, and it will increase everything else. This one down here, Elemental Orbit, where you can increase the number of elemental shields you have active on yourself by one. You can have Earth Shield on yourself and one ally at the same time. I think this is pretty good. I think this would be really interesting to kind of have. You can kind of like split the healing if you wanted to. Alternatively, you can put Lightning Shield on yourself. I know Skillcap talk about, talked about this uh, when they were talking about their 2v2 tier list. And you can do, there are a lot of interactions with certain PvP talents that can work really well. I think this is pretty nice mostly in twos so you can kind of keep healing you can kind of keep the off heals going on both it helps with the um purges as well it's just another buff for people to get off and i think that's really good i think especially when you're playing resto druid and you're playing into something like a preservation evoker which can literally wipe out all the hots it's quite nice to have another another one to kind of for them to sort of basically struggle against spirit walker's grace now this is an ability which i think is awesome obviously we had um something similar going into Shadowlands, and I think this is a really cool ability. I think being able to move, this was one of my, the most fun that I had in, in, in the past, like Mop, for example. Being able to move and cast was awesome. Um, even if it's just a cooldown, two minute cooldown, it means that you can kind of get around a pillar, get a hex out, get some damage going. Like maybe you've got someone in CC and they're kind of kiting you. You can get your Stormkeeper going. You can get all your damage loaded up, ready to go around a corner, kind of coming in, kind of like a fucking fighter jet, just zooming in, ready to slam people. And I think that's a lot of fun. I always take it with Spirit Walker's Aegis. I think it's great to be able to have for the first five seconds uh, immunity to silence and interrupts. I think this is important. It kind of really throws people a little bit. People try and throw their kicks in on like a hex, for example. You can guarantee, guarantee some CC or you can guarantee you can get some damage out and I think that's important. Would I go for this, like reducing the cooldown of it by 30 seconds and increase your movement speed while 20 spin bars active? Definitely. I think this could be really good into certain comps, especially your healers that don't have a ranged kick. I think you could swap onto this. I think this would be a perfectly fine talent to go into, like into a Resto Druid, for example, um, or going into something like, a, I don't know, like a Priest, for example. If you do this, it means that basically you can't be, you, you get like a zoom out and you're doing damage and also you're getting this more often. I still do think, though, that the silence um, and interrupt immunity is good because because a lot of the time you've got a lot of kicks from ranged classes and I think most of the time you're going to queue into if you, even if it's double DPS they'll probably be on you and therefore you'll be getting kicked and this will just kind of help you get the CC you need to to get the ball rolling or actually get some damage out. Tremor is probably one of the most important abilities. In the past, you could use it to get yourself out of fear whilst you're in a fear. It's different now. You kind of need to pre-tremor or you need to make sure that you've got tremor up when your teammate gets CC'd in a fear. It's a pretty good one. I think this is a really awesome talent and I think probably one of the most bread and butter of Elemental Shaman or Shaman in general. Going along again, we've got Purge. I think Purge is a really, really great ability. I think being able to spam this and remove stuff is important. It's important for getting combustion, shields, healing from different classes. Obviously, you do oom a little bit. 5,000 mana is quite a lot, so you need to be careful. But it's not too much that it's kind of like oppressive like it is on, on Enhancement Shaman. I'd never take this. I don't think the fact that it has a 12-second cooldown and removing two beneficial magic buffs is worth it. Don't think it's worth it at all. If it was like five seconds, then yeah, maybe I could see that. But it's, it's quite a long cooldown, so I'd never really pick this. Going down in the middle again, we've got some more passives. So Nature's Fury increases the critical strike chance of your nature spells. This is big for Earthshock. Uh, this is big for Lightning Bolt. So obviously, you know, when you're using Stormkeeper, this critical strike chance is bigger. And obviously there's an interaction as well that we talk about in the Elemental Tree. And I think this is a, a nice ability to take as it also leads down to some interesting and nice abilities. Hex, very vital, uh, a very vital Hex ability. I think, you know, 
15 second cooldown is pretty good. Obviously that comes from this, uh, which is reducing the cooldown of your hex by 15. This pretty much means that off the, the DR almost, you've got a hex up ready to go. So you can kind of hex multiple different targets if you need to. So you get hex out on the healer and you're like, oh no, the DPS are really bursting my teammate. Now I can probably go ahead and hex the, the DPS that's on top of him. And then you can go back and hex the healer again. It feels quite nice. I would never go in Feeblement. I don't think the slow is, is is needed. Most of the time when you'd use this for a slow, you could probably just put down Earthbind. You could put down any other totem that would help there. Don't think that's like necessary at all. But this is this is pretty nice. You don't have to take this. I think you could probably take it out and put it in somewhere else. You could probably put this in, I don't know, Totemic Surge if you wanted to, um, which I think is also a very, very good ability, a very good talent that is situational. Um, but I think... You could probably you could probably do the 30 second hex because most of the time it'll be up again when you need the dr but having it on a 15 seconds especially during shadowlands when we had that for the first time that was really nice nature's guardian i think is a really good again passive heal perfect into double melee when you brought down below 35 percent you instantly heal for 20 percent of your maximum health it cannot occur more than 45 seconds this is pretty good you'll pretty much have this up for any big burst cooldown so at least you'll get some healings out obviously as we talked about in the past if you ever seen any of my shadowlands videos against mind games which is still in the game this is rough it can really really backlash if they get it at the right time this can proc and it can do a lot of damage 20 percent of your health uh, when you've got 350k is a lot you can kind of do the numbers i'm not that good at maths so you'll have to figure that one out but it's a good number as a good chunk and can probably kill you elemental warding reduces all damage taken by magic damage taken by four percent this makes you actually all right into casters which i found was always a difficult thing with elemental shaman you kind of sit there tanking a load of damage this also works for a lot of melee dk dh you know that sort of thing um i don't know if it counts for a lot of rogue poisons i don't think those count as magic damage but anything that has a sort of magic in there like re echoing reprimand that sort of stuff is magic damage you get four percent reduction so that's a really really big thing and i think that's really really important as i said you could probably go to tenic surge i think reducing the cooldown for a max of four seconds i don't know if it's game breaking but for, for a lot of things like for example tremor being up around the same time as maybe someone wants to fear you know having that on instead of a minute cooldown having that on like a 56 second cooldown could be quite nice um your root totems getting reduced for example down lower means you can kite more i think this would be option I'd at least put like one in there maybe instead of having the voodoo mastery if i think i'm not going to be able to get hexes out into double melee i could put that into totemic surge and i think that would actually make a difference at least for kiting wise i might have that up more often i might feel a bit better but those would be the options there on this right hand side i've gone for winds of alakir increases the movement speed bonus of ghost Wolf by three percent and when you have three or more totems active your movement speed is increased by 15 this is probably never going to happen you're probably not going to have three or more totems active don't think that's going to be a possibility um, but the movement speed is quite nice and what it leads to is even better so having the obviously we talked about spirit wolf up here um where you get up to a maximum of 20% with another 10% on that, you've got like 130% movement speed. No one's catching you if they're being slowed. If a Warlock has the movement speed curse on them, then yeah, you, you'll probably be able to outrun most classes with this. Obviously, there's a lot of mobility, but still, it's pretty nice. I've then also gone for Gust of Wind. 30 second cooldown, Gust of Wind hurls you forward. It's a pretty nice ability. If any of you played Legion, you remember this was really useful for getting up onto platforms in Dalaran, kind of jumping to different places, kind of getting out of the way. Obviously, there's a lot more mobility nowadays, so it's a bit easier for people to kind of get there, but I think this is pretty, pretty good. I think personally, maybe I might want to go for Spirit Walkers. A uh, Spirit Walk, this is a, a thing that enhancement always had removes all movement impairing effects and increase your movement speed by 60 percent for eight seconds i will note though that they can obviously re-slow you afterwards but if let's, let's say for example you're getting chased by a warrior who then does that root charge on you you can use this to get out of the route and kind of zoom away which really annoys him frost shock him and slow him and everything and he has to use all his mobility within for your one cooldown which is quite nice obviously you can't use gust of wind on that but to be honest with you you'll have two gust of winds up by the time you get your spirit walk back so i personally think gust of wind is probably the best one here it's probably really good in conjunction with your totems and your slows and frost rock and everything like that so i think it's really really awesome one thing i forgot to mention here was earth grab totem now this is the best talent that they've brought back entirely the best talent like hands down best talent they've ever brought back earth grab totem is incredible it's really really good and bringing it back in a way that it sort of can root everything and then obviously it's a minute cooldown but as i said it could be 56 second cooldown it's beautiful aoe people can walk into it you can get rogues out with it you can do everything with it you can stop double melee it's beautiful and it's a really really nice totem just to add in on top of earthbind and i think it you know what it's just really life-changing 
I probably wouldn't take Windrush. It's two minute cooldown. It's a long cooldown that I'm probably never going to be able to do. Um, I probably wouldn't use that much and it would be wasted. I think always go for Earth Grab. Improved Lightning Bolt increases the damage of your Lightning Bolt by 20%. This stacks with Stormkeeper, which makes Stormkeeper a very, very dangerous ability to use. Also quite nice to just mean, you know, when you don't have any Lava Burst, you don't have anything to do, you can press Lightning Bolt and it kind of does a little bit of something. It sort of tickles a little bit more, but mostly Stormkeeper damage. Thunderstorm, your bread and butter. It does a little bit of nature damage, so bear in mind that it will break CCs. So it's en it's not enough to be like significant like it is in Wrath, but it is enough to kind of break CC. So just do be be careful with that if you're playing with something like a, a like a polymorphing class like Mage uh, or, or, or Rogues or anything like that, which has, has a sort of like a CC that can be broken easily with damage. Thunderstorm will do it. So try not to kite people on top of the CC target. But again, 30 second cooldown, knock people off one of the most amazing utility things. If you haven't gone into a BG and haven't gone into Eye of the Storm and knocked a load of people off, you're missing out. It's a lot of fun. And finally, kind of going down to Lightning Lasso, this is about where I, I stop. I don't think the end roots of, um, of any of this is interesting or would be worthwhile. I can go have a look at them and give me my thoughts on it, but I don't think it's worthwhile. I prefer obviously getting down to Lightning Lasso. This is the most useful ability. It does a lot of damage and it's a, a casted stun very very useful does you know it's just it's just useful in general probably one of ellie's stable abilities used to be a pvp talent as well so now you can use it in anything any content which is awesome and it's really really lovely and i like it it's very nice thunder shock again i would never take this always lasso especially for pvp there could be a niche for this but you're always going to want to take the stun anyway looking down at some of the other talents now obviously ancestral guidance if you wanted to go down here i think it's more of a resto ability i mean a lot of this is just resto i just wouldn't take them it just wouldn't be needed um, Stone Skin Totem, 10% physical damage reduction. A lot of things do magic damage. I don't think it's good. Tranquil Air Totem, cast pushback, interrupt effects. This could be useful, but again, one minute cooldown. If you're both stacking, I mean, I do, I, they could just stun you in this. There's a lot of things that I think you could take that are more useful than any of this down on the end game, at end sort of like nodes. I don't think it's useful. I think it's too long a cooldown, and I don't think yeah anyone's going to find it useful. Uh, Poison Cleansing Totem, again, probably not needed. You can probably kill it very easily and the only poisons you're going to get really going to deal with is like Asa Rogues, for example, and you can probably get that dispelled anyway. Totemic Recall, again, this could be useful. It resets all of the cooldowns. So, for example, Tremor, that sort of thing. It was useful in the past. I think this could be a good ability, um, as most of your totems are three minute, but it's a three minute cooldown itself. That basically means that you use the totems, you Totemic Recall, you've got them again, and then you kind of got to wait a fair bit of time again to use it. But then again, most of those totems will come back up in that time period when you're waiting for that to come down. So yeah, maybe it could be useful. Maybe you could go down that path. You could sort of like, you know, go with go with the flow or you could go Surging Shields, but that's two points you've got to take out from somewhere else. You know, you could get rid of Elemental Orbit and Earth Shield, maybe something else, but I, I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to take it. Maybe I get rid of Earth Ellie, take these three out and go down here. But I don't think it's worth what you lose to kind of pick those. And again, call the elements, reduce the cooldown of Totem Recall by 60 seconds. This could be useful. But again, you don't have enough points to actually get down this. I don't think it's worthwhile. Okay, let's go look at the elemental side of the tree. Now, obviously, as we're going in depth, we will obviously talk about it. Earthshock, you already get. Earthshock's there. Again, big concussive force. It can do a lot of damage, but it's like a filler. It's what you're dumping your Maelstrom into. You can't, we're kind of like a builder spender class. And I think Earthshock, again, it used to crit massively. I think it still hits quite hard, um, but it's just a really, really good ability that's just instant cast and you can get your damage out. Earthquake, again, very useful. Always useful as a means of kind of keeping people in combat, just as a kind of like an AOE. Pretty good on top of double melee, as we'll talk about in a second, because obviously you go for uh, Tumultuous Fissures, increases the chance for Earthquake to knock enemies down by 3%. I think this is good. It means that melee can get knocked down, it can disrupt them. Um, I wouldn't go for Inundate, to be honest. Um, there's no need to kind of get the 8 Maelstrom, especially into certain classes that don't really like you get one buff off and that's it. I think it's way better to have the chance of Earthquake to knock enemies down by 3%. I think that's really, really vital. So yeah, it's gone up to 8% now. Uh, and that's useful. Elemental Fury, this is what we were talking about. Your damaging critical strikes deal 250% damage instead of the usual 200%. Obviously, when you crit, it hits way harder, which is why Elemental Blast earlier was hitting so hard, because it's interacting with this passive. This means that all of your damage, it means all of your Lava Burst and everything like that hits way harder and it's probably like you have to always take this. I always go Fire Elemental. Uh, I think whilst your Fire Ellie is active, Flame Shock deals damage 33% faster and newly applied Flame Shocks last 100% fast longer. This means that the certain interactions that come in the Elemental build kind of work a lot better. 
I don't think you would ever really want to go for Storm Ellie unless you're kind of playing PvE. I think this is a great PvE ability. Going down here, I will always go Ancestral Wolf Affinity. I think this is really useful. Cleanse Spirit, Wind Shear, Purge, uh, and Totem Cast no longer cancel Ghost Wolf. So you can kite, you can put down your... Um, before, you'd have to kind of come out and put down Totems. But now you can just keep kiting. The Totem's gone down and you're not slowed you're still at 100 movement speed that's really really useful um you could go primordial fury your healing critical strikes heal for 250 percent healing instead of usual 200 if you want to off heal if you feel like you're not going to be sat on if you're not going to be trained then you can take this and off heal really well this obviously means that you're you although you have less mana to use for healing they will crit and heal a lot more very useful for off healing so yeah you could do this i'd say do this in threes if you think you're not going to be trained uh, otherwise, I'd go for Ancestral Wolf Affinity. It's very nice. Next one is Flow of Power. Increases the Maelstrom generated by Lightning Bolt and Lava Burst by two and their Elemental Overloads by one. This just means that you get Maelstrom more often, interacting with Earthshock and doing damage that way. This is the ability that I was talking about before. Whilst you have an act Elemental Active, that's your Fire Ellie and your Earth Ellie, your damage taken is reduced by 5%. So it interacts well with all of the other damage reductions that you have, making you quite tanky. And you can kind of rotate Fire Ellie and Earth Ellie. I wouldn't really go for refreshing waters. Uh, I don't think you're going to get the chance to, when you need it, when like, aka when you're being trained, you're not going to really get the chance to healing surge yourself that often if you've got to be faking kicks. Could be useful in a niche situation, maybe into wizards, but who knows? I don't think it's as good as having that 5% damage reduction when you've got your burst cooldowns out. Lava Surge, your Flame Shock damage over time is a 10% to reset the remaining cooldown on Lava Burst and cause your next Lava Burst to be instant. Now we were talking about how Fire Ellie makes this hap like makes your ticks go faster, which means that there's more chances quicker. Do you get Lava Surge, which means you get more chances to get an instant cast Lava Burst, which is useful. And obviously it resets the cooldown. So if you've got one, you'll go back up to two. If you've got zero, it'll go back up to one which means you have more chances to press the button that does the most damage. And I think this is a good quality of life thing. Lava Surge is great and it interacts well with the other, basically the other parts of your kit. Call of Thunder increases the damage of your Lightning Bolt, Chain Lightning and Storm Elemental by 15%. Again, we talked about Stormkeeper interacting with those Lightning Bolt abilities makes Stormkeeper a really, really dangerous cooldown that does a lot of damage. And I'm going to come on to my build later, which I think would actually be really, really good and interact really well with Stormkeeper and Lava Burst. Going down this side, obviously the lightning side, and then you've got the fire side on the other side. Um, reduces the cast time of lightning bolt and chain lightning to 0.25 seconds and increases the duration of earthquake. Again, earthquake up longer means that you've got more chances to keep rogues in combat, other people in combat, more chances for there to be a knockdown, which is good to double melee. And obviously reducing the cooldown of lightning bolt, mean, cast time of lightning bolt, sorry, means that you're getting more of that damage out. And I think that's really useful. Going down the Stormkeeper, Stormkeeper again is a big ability. If you don't know what Stormkeeper is, it was an ability that came in from Legion. It used to be part of the um, special weapon artifact that we had there. You charge yourself with lightning, causing your next two lightning bolts to deal 150% more damage. Think about all the lightning bolt interactions that we've had. And also causes your next two lightning bolts, aka the ones you're about to use instant cast or chain lightnings to be instant cast and trigger an elemental overload on every target. AKA, if you dump lightning bolts with a stormkeeper charge in they do 150 percent more damage plus the 20 percent damage from the other abilities plus the other damage abilities that we've got there and we'll do so much extra damage and just pump into them and then also the overloads will be on there as well so it has more chances to do about sort of like you know almost 100k damage in a couple of globals maybe even more it does a lot of damage and i think the interactions here will be kind of really useful for that and will kind of it'll kind of show you as you get along how much damage it can put out as long as you can cast it Flash of Lightning, again, I've gone to because casting Lightning Bolt or Chain Lightning, anytime you're kind of doing any filler or anytime using Stormkeeper, reduces the cooldown of your nature spells by one second. I need to do more research on how this interacts, but my thinking is, and I don't think it causes your Stormkeeper to do anything, but stuff like, you know, any of your nature spells, any of the things that you've kind of got down there, like, you know, Earth Grab Totem, stuff like that, kind of gets its cooldowns reduced. Um, I need to do more into, uh, more research in this but having more cdr is important and i think this is really really useful going back up here echo of the elements lava burst has an additional charge two charges of lava burst perfect getting more damage out that's really really useful call of fire increases the damage of flame shock lava burst lava beam and fire early by 10 percent. again more added damage to your lava burst which hit like a truck Flames of the Cauldron reduces the cooldown of Flameshot by 1.5 seconds and Flameshot deals damage 15% faster. We talked about that interaction. More Flameshot dealing damage faster, more chances for Lava Surge, more chances for Instant Cast Flame, uh, Instant Cast Lava Burst, more damage rolling, more CDR. This is an interesting one. I used to hate this ability. If you watched any of my guides beforehand, I hated Surge of Power. I now love it. 
I think it's great. Earth Shock, Elemental Blast, and Earthquake enhance your next spell cast within 15 seconds. Flame Shock spreads another Flame Shock. Lightning Bolt, your next cast will cause an additional two Elemental Overloads. Could you pair that with Stormkeeper? I've done some nutty damage. Chain Lightning, your next cast will hit an additional target. Obviously, PV, that's quite nice. Lava Burst reduces the cooldown of your Fire, Ellie, and Storm Elemental by six seconds. Again, getting more uptime of 5% damage reduction, more uptime of your Lava Surges, everything. And Frost Shock freezes the target in place for six seconds. Whole oh, baby. If you. Earthshock and Frostshock, they are stuck in another route. You can have a route that you can control beyond your Earth Grab. Beautiful. Love this. And it, the flexibility of choosing what you want to do is amazing. Aftershock could be good. Obviously, having your 25% chance to refund all your Maelstrom when you use it is nice and it works well with a lot of interactions. I think it could be good, but I definitely think Surge of Power is so useful, especially with the meta at the minute and especially with how Lightning Bolt interacts and everything like that. Power of the Maelstrom, casting Lava Burst has a 10% chance to cause your next two Lightning Bolts or Chain Lightning Cast to trigger Elemental Overload an additional time. Again, we were talking about this, how it makes things interact well. Again, more additional Elemental Overloads and it triggers with Master Elements, which is casting Lava Burst increases your next damage or healing of your next Nature, Physical or Frost Spell by 20%. So, Nature Spell is Lightning Bolt. You cast Lava Burst, okay? You've got, you've just... You know, obviously, it's, it's going to be a bit difficult difficult to kind of interact this with um, Surge of Power because you need to Earth Shock and that consumes Master Elements. But let's say you want a Lava Burst, okay? And then this Power of the Elements procs up. Uh, and then you've got this up as well, which is an extra 10 to 20%. Stormkeeper comes up, interacting with all of this stuff here. And you suddenly get like, you're getting like three overloads and it's doing a massive amount of damage. That can rinse people. The interactions here are incredible. And obviously, it's a proc chance, but I think it's insane. Improved Flame Tongue Weapon, imbuing your weapon of Flame Tongue increases your Fire Spell damage by 5%. Again, extra damage to Lava Burst, all interacting with each other, all doing so much damage, and I think it's really, really good. Primal Elementalist, your Earth, Fire, and Storm Elementals are drawn from Primal Elementals, 80% more powerful than regular Elementals with additional abilities, and you gain direct control of them. Fire Early Pumps, honestly, I swear to God, it hits like a truck. And then the Meteor spell also chunks people. It's very good damage. This is worthwhile for the extra damage, and also... Um, just for stuns on your Earth Ellie, it's really, really useful. You don't have the Earth Ellie wall anymore, sadly, uh, so you can't get the second wall, uh, which is a shame, but you, at least you can stun people still, and that's really, really useful. So now we get into the kind of the bread and butter. This is where things can change, and I'll obviously talk about other things that I that I do that do change it around, but this is where things can change. Um, I'm going down Primordial Wave. I think being able to spread Flame Shocks is important to getting damage out and the interactions there. Also, as we've talked about with you know your mast uh, I'll, I'll talk about what the mastery is but basically you know the amount of echoing of abilities the overloads where you kind of send multiple lightning bolts multiple lava bursts this obviously also sends out a second lava burst um so your next lava burst will also hit all targets affected by your flame shock for 80 80 percent of damage spread damage really really massive um, I've also gone down Rolling Magma, Lava Burst and Lava Burst Overload damage reduces the cooldown of Primordial Wave by 1.0 seconds, so you can have that up more often. And then I've also gone for Primordial Surge, casting Primordial Wave triggers Lava Surge immediately and every 3 seconds for 12 seconds. Lava Surge is triggered by Primordial Wave, increase the damage of your next Lava Burst by 25%. Obviously, Lava Surge, in this 12 second window, you have a 25% buff to your Lava Burst, which is hitting like a truck, and you can spread that and it does a lot of damage. This interacts with deeply rooted elements. This was a legendary in Shadowlands. I think it's a really great ability. Casting Lava Burst has a 7% chance to activate Ascendance for 6 seconds. What this does is that it, any target with lava uh, with Flame Shock on, it sends another burst of um, Lava Burst out, and that does a lot of damage. If you happens to proc when uh, you've got a primordial wave up, and which has obviously more chances for you to do Lava Burst damage, and obviously, you know, create this ascendance it means you can do a lot of burst damage in a very small cooldown and it's also super fun it's really fun kind of going like i'm procking and you explode and you do loads of damage and then obviously that also puts all of your lava bursts on reset and you can spam cast them if you want to obviously you know with a lot with a low haste that we have it's difficult but you can do a lot of damage with this and i think it's a really cool ability would i go ascendance it's a three minute cooldown you can get it down to two minutes I don't think it's worthwhile. I think it might be more of a PvE talent. I don't know because I don't do PvE on my Elemental Shaman. But I do think having more chances for this to proc in a smaller window. Um, you can get this, you know, this usually procs. Uh, it did at least it did in Shadowlands, sort of like once every minute or so, uh, which is a lot better than the three minutes. You get this three times for a short period of time uh, within the three minutes 
you know that that's up and that obviously it can cause a lot of devastation because nobody knows it's going to happen at least when you see ascendance happening you know that it's going on cooldown for the next three minutes but with this you don't know and that adds a lot of surprise and a lot of damage that comes out now the reason why I like all of this and the interactions is because of this talent here. And I haven't gone, again, I haven't gone for any of the end nodes here. And I'll and explain why I haven't and explain what the other build that I probably would run is. Increases the damage dealt by your elemental overloads by 15%. Now, bear in mind, most of it is down to 80%. This puts your overloads at almost 100% damage, right? They're 80% usually of your damage. Now they're 95%. There is a 5% difference, which isn't much. I'm telling you, that isn't much. The 15% extra means that you're getting a load of Lava Burst. You're doing a load of damage with your Lightning Bolts. Your Stormkeeper, your Lava Burst, your Fire Rally, all working together. You are constantly doing damage. You are an absolute constant damage machine with a massive burst that comes out. This is how I see this build. And I think I'm in love with this one. I think this one, I, I kind of figured it out recently. I think this is going to be a really, really good build now that Ellie Blast is gone. And this is the one that I, I would like to play. However, there is another build that you can go for, and let me talk you through this. So, as you can see, I've kind of removed a few of the points from here. I've kind of kept the Rolling Magma, because I do like the cooldown on, on a Primordial Wave. Obviously, Flame Shock has a cooldown now of 4.5 seconds, so you can spread it easily, but it's quite nice to have the Lava Burst. Now, what I wanted to talk about is this one, Wind Speakers. This was my favorite legendary from Shadowlands, in which you cast Earthshock, um, any of those abilities and you gain lava surge and increase the damage of your next lava burst by 10% you actually pump some damage and it gives you the flexibility of when you're kiting or going into melee and you're able to just do damage you can still keep the damage rolling despite being basically trained and I think this works really really well with um, proccing ascendance and basically proccing a lot of damage and just kind of like doing a lot of damage whilst not having to cast which I think is very very good and very useful into a meta where things have a lot of mobility and they have a lot of interrupts and a lot of stuns a lot of things like that so you can just kind of get the damage rolling there this one I, I'm not as excited about but I think it's a possibility and a, th and a thing you can use obviously there'll be other creators with other ideas we'll have to see which one works well I think a lot of people were using the LE blast build on beta I personally think that my other build, so the one that sort of um, focuses really on this, I think is really, really interesting. I think this will be an interesting build. I think this will do a lot of damage, especially when you get to full gear and you're just kind of pumping out lava bursts and you're kind of pumping out damage. Having to cast Ellie Blast, you know, look at it. It's like a uh, almost a two-second cast. You're going to get kicked. It doesn't... I'm just, I'm just not a fan of it. I would much rather have a lot of free casting and a lot of damage kind of coming out from your lava burst, which is the most fun to play. This is the most fun build that I've had. We've talked about talents for a very long time. Let's talk about the PvP talents. There's a few that I'd go for, and I think there's a lot of options here. I think the new Precognition is really, really good. And I think that it's, you know, having that, inter like, faking is rewarded. And I think this will be a good one to go for. Most of the time, I'm going Static Field Totem, though. I think Static Field Totem is a very, very good totem to have. I think having that up means that people can't get away from you. And people can't get to you until they kill the totem. And it kind of changes the focus of people a lot. And I think it's useful. You could also go Spectral Recovery. I think Spectral Recovery is really, really good. And with as the builds we're talking about, extra additional 10% movement speed for Ghost Wolf means that you are zooming. So I think this is a useful ability. 3% of your health every two seconds. Now that our health is absolutely massive. It's actually quite a bit. 3% of 300k, you know, it's quite a nice heal. I mean, it's not massive every two seconds, but it's good and you can kind of run and I think that's awesome. You can also go Sky Fury. I think it's it's entirely useful. As you can see, there's a visual bug here, um, but you can go for Sky Fury here and I think Sky Fury is a good totem to get, again to use. 40 second cooldown. It's going to be up whilst anyone has any big cooldowns. Use that as a means to kind of do damage. If you don't think you're going to be kited, if you don't think you're going to be attacked by double melee, I think this will be a useful one to go for. So if we kind of take that as our staple, my pretty much my staple always, and the ones I always take is Control Lava. Flame Shock's damage occurs 15% more often. You're seeing the interaction here probably one of the best pvp talents that came in in shadowlands if flame shock is dispelled a volcanic eruption happens does a lot of damage knocks him up in the air does a lot of damage works really well with Afli. works really well with shadow priest a lot of good interactions there that cause a lot of damage and obviously as we said more lava surges always needed i pretty much always take grounding totem there's probably most of the time always going to be a need for it you're always going to be into a priest which most of the time always have mind games shaman again the hex game i've always called it the shaman gameplay which is basically you got to out hex the other shaman you got to kick them you got to dodge their grounding and then you got to hex them it kind of it's kind of like a show of dominance other shamans you, you know you guys are shamans right you'll understand this the, the shaman game grounding totem useful for that but a lot of other abilities can be grounded like for example grounding karma damage 
that's quite useful. There's lots of other interactions like that that we'll, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about some some tips and tricks. But this is the ones that I'd say, you know, this is this is an ability that I think is a very good one. And this is pretty much my staple. You're kind of looking at it here. You could go Sky Fury, but most of the time I'll put Static Field Totem. Don't feel like Sky Fury is 100% necessary, but it works really, really well with your how, how your critical strike works. So I'd probably play this most of the time with like, you know, like a Warlock or something. But if I feel like I needed to, if we felt like we were losing, you know, and we needed to kind of basically have a way of stopping the melee on their cooldowns then static field totem is great cool so you're you're new to elemental shaman you don't know what to choose what race do you go for now obviously we've talked about all of the talents and everything but realistically speaking what kind of race do you want to go this is my opinion dwarf is the master race i think dwarfs are great dark iron or regular dwarf perfect the only unfortunate thing about it is it does put your cooldown uh, does put your trinket on cooldown when you use the racial when you use the dwarf racial it puts your trinket on cooldown however Dark Iron, you can use this either as a means to do extra damage, and which it does, obviously that's useful, or you can use your dwarf, regular dwarf ratio as a kind of 10% wall, which could be nice. I'm, I'm, I'm Dark Iron now, I kind of wish I was back to a regular dwarf. I think regular dwarf is probably one of my favorite classes, uh, sorry, races, because of the fact that that 10% extra wall can be quite nice after you've just gotten rid of all your poisons and got rid of some sort of magic debuff. And I think it's quite useful to have that damage reduction as opposed to the actual damage you're going to be doing because most of the time you'll be using your dwarf racial as a means to kind of get rid of something and obviously if you want to get rid of something it means that your healers in cc or there's something else in trouble and having that 10 percent extra damage reduction actually is quite nice what other things can you go for orc tauren there's lots of different things orc obviously you've got extra damage tauren you've got an extra stun an aoe stun with war stomp lots of things like that Dranai um troll lots of different options but in my opinion dwarf if you go alliance go dwarf or go orc and go tauren um of your horde and those are my kind of feelings on that let's talk about gearing obviously i'm not fully geared yet but i think in general depending on which talents you want to go i think personally if you're going to go for something like deeply rooted elements you want to be going mastery well versa mastery and then haste um, I think that's probably the best one. I think increasing how your mastery works, which let's talk about that now. Your mastery is elemental overload. Your lightning bolt, lava burst, chain lightning cast have a 24.1% chance to trigger a second cast of the same target dealing 100% of normal damage and generating less maelstrom. Bear in mind, this was 80 without this build. Let's see if we, let's change this actually and see what it does. If I go down here and do that, apply changes. I'm just interested to see if this goes back to what it usually does uh, with your mastery. Yeah, there we go. 85% of your normal damage, generating less damage. So that does less damage. Now, with this build, it goes up to 100%. When you double that damage, which obviously we have a multiple percent chance of doing, it does the regular 100% of normal damage. Every If you're critting for 40k with your Lava Burst, when the second one comes out, you're critting again for the 40k. That is 80k damage of which you pressed one global. So yeah, mastery could be really, really good. And buffing that and getting those those items is good. Obviously, haste is nice. Having haste is nice. I think having a bit of haste is nice if you can. But um, I think mastery is the, the most vital one that you want to go for. Because, again, that increases your damage. You will notice your cast times are low. Which is why we want more free, you know, instant cast damage to come out. Where all those interactions work. Elemental Shaman since Shadowlands coming to Dragonfly has changed massively and these interactions have made it a beautiful pleasure to play. But obviously we need the gear and we need some things to make it work worthwhile. So that's my opinion. In terms of stats, Mastery, Haste and then Crit obviously, but Versa at the top. So you want to get all the pieces I've got a Versa on and then maybe Mastery and then get Haste. That's my opinion. There were some um, builds in Shadowlands that you could do like Crit based, but I think Mastery with the interaction with the talent build that I showed you there, I think will work really, really well. Kind of buffing your um, how, how those interact with your elemental overload and obviously the damage you can get out there. Talking about comps for Elemental Shaman, I'm going to start with twos and then I'm going to move on to threes. And I think there's a lot of options for you. So I'm just going to quickly go through what I think is the best for twos because I think it's fairly simple. I think the best healer right now for you to do 2v2 with is a Restodruid. I think Restodruids are pretty good in Dragonflight. And I think the fact that they now have some quite strong offensive capabilities, for example, with balance, affinity, um, related spells. It's quite intense and you can provide a lot of damage where you might not be able to finish in a 2v2 by yourself. You might not have enough cast time, you might, they not, might not be slowed. You just might not have enough Maelstrom even to finish off with, a, with an Earthshock. 
The rest of Druid can do that for you by providing some offensive capabilities that isn't just cat form, that is also just, you know, star surging, for example, and just doing that damage output. And I think that's going to be really, really major going forwards. I also think Mistweaver and Priest are going to be pretty much up there, probably the second in my opinion. I think Mistweaver's being able to kick now is pretty big. They've got a lot of healing and they do have some offensive capability. Touch of Death is also great. Again, talking about finishing, just a really great way of you being able to basically finish a target, which we do struggle with sometimes. So I think that'll be really, really cool. I do think Preservation Evoker might be fun, but again, it requires it to be quite in close range with you. And it may have some really cool synergy in that regard. I think it's got a lot of toolkit and it's probably one of the best healers at the minute. Whether or not it works with Ellie is, is, is hard to say because I think Ellie requires a lot of help sometimes, especially... Uh, at in, in these times where you don't quite have enough and you don't have an MS effect, it does need the help to finish targets a lot of the time. But I think that it's left open, you know. I think probably Rest of Shaman would be at the bottom. I don't think Double Shaman works as well as it, it may have done in the past. But, I mean, most things are viable. I think you could probably play with anything. But the best of the best would probably be Rest of Druid. In terms of 3v3, this is where it gets really, really interesting. I think your ultimate comp is always going to be Lock Shaman, so Lock Shaman Druid, Lock Shaman Mistweaver, Lock Shaman Evoker, that sort of thing is going to be LSP, you know, that sort of thing is going to be your top comp with Demonology or even Affliction, I think both of them will work super well. It's going to be best because as Elemental Shaman you need to be with Wizards so you can free cast. They're going to have to either choose you or they're going to let the, the, the Warlock free cast and I think that's always a bad idea most of the time, especially when they're strong. And obviously Warlocks are super tanky at the minute as well, so it's, it's a difficult decision to choose between these two very tanky classes. And that makes your life a lot easier. It means that you can kite well, you can, or, I mean, we've also talked, you know, you can see the kind of speed that you can move in. And now with the root totems and slows and everything that you've got in your toolkit now, you can easily kite people, uh, at least one target for sure. So uh, if they split, you'll be fine. And if they, if they don't, if they go on you or if they go on your teammate then you're going to have a lot of opportunities to pump damage and even kite for them or peel for them sorry and i think that'll be a really really great comp i think it's going to be probably the s tier comp for elemental shaman i think going down and going in other options to go for i think elemental kind of like shandapri is kind of like a those sort of utility classes or specs sorry it works with almost anything i think you know having an ms effect in there with a warrior like a fury warrior like playing thunder would work really really well i think you could play with a windwalker monk you could probably play with a balanced druid as well i think all of those would work you can probably definitely play ellie shadow priest i think that would work out really well i think those classes are these specs feel very strong at the minute so that would definitely work out using siphene as a slow and a 50 percent ms is going to be really really strong and kind of help you get the damage up time especially as it's incredibly hard to kill um, i'll point out now that it used to take just an earth shock to kill a siphon doesn't anymore takes a couple uh, which means that you can dump all your maelstrom and then you'll probably have to frost shock it or cast something else to kill it which takes obviously two globals and that's quite a long time and it has a lot of uptime even if you do that then obviously melee you're going to have an easier time doing it but again you have to spend your stuff you'll spend your resources to do so so that comp could work really really well i think also ellie devastation evoker so Ellie Devoker would probably do quite well. Um, a lot of burst damage coming from both. Uh, a lot of CC potential as well. I think that'd be a really, really good comp. I think Ellie Mage as well. With Arcane Mage having the burst that it does and the kind of constant pressure, the slows, the CC. You could definitely, in a lasso go, kind of do a lot of damage, especially with um, some of the burst damage that comes out from Arcane. I'm sure with Fire as well it would work. I'm not sure about Frost, but I think though that comp could work with the rest of Druid. I think most of these comps will work with like a Resto Druid or with a Mistweaver. That tends to probably be the best, you know, healer. Something that gives you a lot of uptime and a lot of heals. And then also has that offensive capability too. Being able to either go in and stun and clone or going into leg sweep and, and sap off or, you know, use the, the Disorient Mist. I think there's lots of opportunities for that. And I think those are probably your best comps, to be honest. I think it will work with most things. I think you make anything work. I think as long as the class is good, uh, this, then you'll, you'll be fine. Like, you, know, you could go with the Windwalker as well. You could do lots of different things. I think there's lots of options out there for you to play. So I wouldn't be too put off by playing with your friends. I just go out there and play them. And I think you'll be totally fine. Obviously, guys, I want to talk about some gameplay stuff. Um, 
some things that I think are useful, some things which I can kind of help you with kiting. Elemental Shaman is best placed uh, in an arena when you're in between, so let's say your other caster is sort of like, you know, on this, um, on this, this little bit here, they're tanking melee or whatever, um, melee, uh, your healer's like back here on like a pillar or something like that, and then you kind of want to, you, you want to be, you want to basically be like here. Melee's there, okay, like Melee's right in front of you, and the other thing, of a other sort of circle in front of you, and then their enemy healer's like here, trying to like heal them. You want to be here, you want to be in between them, causing as much misery for that healer, kicking him, everything like that, and then dealing as much damage as possible to the enemy on that other side. That'll be really, really useful. Um, another thing as well, when you're pressing lasso, make sure you are on a pillar. If you can get to a pillar and you can go around it, you can kind of line of sight getting kicked because obviously lasso can be kicked. And then also, you know, stuff like that is, is very, very useful kind of like to uh, keep your CC in pace and then also avoid it. Another big tip and trick I can give you for getting in combat when you're doing 2v2. So when you're doing 2v2 and you go up against like a rogue priest or something like that, my best tip that I can give you is if you charge forward, uh, and then you get within range and then you put down a earthbind totem you've got quite a big range of it and that puts you in combat once you're in combat it is your job to then try and stay in combat and if you can stay in combat that's fantastic you have multiple things now to kind of get you going you know you you can you can gust the wind you've got a really really fast ghost wolf you can kind of really really keep going i mean let me let me take let me take the uh special recovery now and we'll and we'll see how fast we really go i mean i can literally zoom so quickly up at this top like i mean it's impossible to catch me i can i can place this totem i can place this totem and i'm still running and i'm still going like this just bear in mind with the build that you're going you can kind of kite and you can get really really fast i've got 20 percent extra movement speed does it show me my speed now i don't think it does but you know you've got you've got 20 percent from spirit wolf i've got 20 uh how many from spectral recovery i've got an extra 10 percent from this i've got um an extra 10 percent from this i've got 40 percent basically movement speed right now i've got 140 movement speed and i can't be slowed increase movement speed by 50 percent less hindered by effects that reduce movement speed like you're going to be zooming nothing's going to catch you you're zooming right now so that'd be my advice play your elemental shaman as disruptive as possible and get as much damage out spread your flame shocks it doesn't have to be on a healer and if you're playing with a mage then obviously the flame shocks go like when you polymorph that's fine but both both targets should be flame shocked you should be pumping the damage make sure you purge first as well those are my kind of like little gameplay tricks that's what kind of helps me out um kick on cooldown with fake casting i can i can give you some tips on this and i think fake casting is an important skill to learn but it mostly comes from you know um i don't know it, it's it's a very difficult thing because most people kind of figure out bits and pieces themselves and they learn where's best to fake cast but fake casting you want to choose an ability that you think your opponent is thinks important for example heals heals are an important one stormkeeper important my heals are 1.4 my stormkeeper is 1.4 i can't do lava burst um but they're they're gonna they'll think those are important right so what you want to do is you want to figure out where people kick most of the time people kick there most most people kick in the middle you can do this most people kick in the middle if they're really switched on and they're watching you and they know you're fake casting they'll kick early so you go like this and then off and they'll try and kick early they'll kick there sometimes people that are really good so like high rated players they'll most of the time kick at the end of the cast because they want to guarantee you're going to go for the cast so you can't i mean it went off there like i tried to fake there it just went off there most of the time they'll kick like there and then you can kind of you can fake there it depends on the enemy you're facing obviously if you're going to melee don't fake cast yourself to death don't just sit there going like oh you're gonna you're gonna kick oh, you're gonna kick no no don't don't do that fake cast once maybe twice if they don't just kind of use something else use another ability like frost shock um earth bind earth grab do something even even sort of your static field totem throw that out there just do that because it is better for you to do that sort of thing than to do anything else i think it's way better for you to kind of use your globals in that way instead of just faking the entire time but if you get a fake cast and you're using i don't know like precognition for example then by all means just start casting away they can't do a thing about you for four seconds so but anyway with the build that i've shown you i think there'll be less opportunities for that to happen i think you'll be able to throw out a lot more damage as an instant cast i think it'll be just fun it'll be just really really fun to do okay whew, we talked a lot about elemental shaman um let's let's come to a conclusion I think in conclusion, Elemental Shaman isn't an S tier class at the minute. It's definitely like A tier. It feels very good. It has definitely got a strength to it. But I think that in general, 
this build in the way that we interact and get more gear will see us do a lot more damage uh, there'll be a lot more damage coming out especially the fact that our elemental overload is now 100 percent of the damage i think you know utility wise we've got even better i think damage wise maybe we could use with a little buff on like lightning bolt for example but i'm fairly sure lava burst feels great uh, i think everything else is pretty balanced um so and that's kind of like that's kind of like the vibe that we're going for and i think that's awesome i think we're in such a great position i think you're going to love playing elemental shaman obviously if you have any questions you want to know extra things you think i've missed something out missed out on you know whether we want to about like crafted gear for example i think it's fairly self-explanatory just type in infurious into the craft order and see if you can find something there i think that would be my suggestion um you want to get obviously the five percent cc reduction um, we can talk about gearing another point ask me any gearing questions you want I think a lot of that is self-explanatory you want medallion and then you want to get the the mastery gear as we talked about um, but the, otherwise I think it's fairly fairly straightforward that's the great thing about dragonflight it's straightforward no upgrades it's all the same gearing grind your honor it takes like three hours max get the full gear go do arena get conquest do RPGs have fun that's the main thing dragonflight's looking great I'm having a lot of fun. I'm really glad that we've got this, that they've done such an amazing job with it. Uh, again, like, subscribe, jo join the family, just get involved, follow me on Twitter, go watch me on Twitch sometimes when I'm streaming, and yeah, just have a wonderful, wonderful day. Any questions, let me know in the, in the comments, and otherwise, guys, I will catch you in the next video. Peace.